Hey everyone, it's Joseph, and I know it has been a while. I was a bit distracted getting prepared for Adobe Max this year. That's the creative conference that Adobe has every year. I was there speaking about Adobe Muse. It was awesome, great time, definitely distracted me from the tutorial stuff, and I took a new job which in the beginning, in the transition, um, took really all of my attention, and for good reason, and uh, just know that I'm back. So today we're gonna be creating this floating cheeseburger. Yours does not have to be a cheeseburger. I'm using a cheeseburger, I'm hungry. That's my thing. So we've got this cheeseburger that animates, floating up, and the shadow expands below it, and uh, the idea is it's really 3D looking, it's got a lot of depth, and it's accomplished using Move for Muse and Adobe Muse, and really no crazy tricks up its sleeve other than using Move for Muse, which um, since so many of you already have it, I figure it's worth doing a tutorial on. If you don't have it, you can go to moveformuse.com, it's M-O-V-E-4, spelled out, F-O-R, muse.com, and uh, you'll be able to get the pack of animation widgets for Adobe Muse. So I'm gonna close this up and show you how easy it is to throw it together because it really was not hard. It's a cheeseburger, it's a shadow, and then we use the widgets to tell the cheeseburger to do one effect and the shadow to do another. For those of you who are wondering about the shadow, um, it's a simple cast shadow slash contact shadow. Um, I'm gonna go into Photoshop real quick to show you how I created it, just in case you are wondering. I've already got it created, but I'm going to create it again and it's really pretty easy to do. I've already got the cheeseburger cut out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to option drag my cheeseburger layer underneath itself to create a second one. And then that bottom layer, I'm gonna scoot down just a little bit. And then I'm gonna press Command T to free transform it. I'm gonna make it smaller. I'm gonna squash it. And I'm gonna hit return. And then I'm going to fill it black instead of it being a weird squished cheeseburger under the cheeseburger. Uh, so I've got my foreground swatch already set to black. You can press the letter D on the keyboard to reset your swatches. Uh, and then I'm gonna press Option or Alt along with the Shift key and hit Delete. And that's going to fill it with the color black. Now, I don't want it to necessarily be completely black, but we're gonna get to that in a sec. Uh, first, I'm going to blur it, so I'm going to go to Filter, and then I'm going to choose Blur, and then Gaussian Blur. And if this is remedial for you guys, feel free to skip ahead. It's really not a big deal. And see how it's, uh, I mean, it's looking kind of a bit more like a circle than I might want it to. Um, so feel free to cancel that, go back and free transform, uh, just to get that shadow looking in such a way that it might really be cast from the cheeseburger. You know, think of it, you, you may even wanna reduce the opacity now, you can kick it down, I'll kick mine down to 30%, uh, just to get a look at what that might look like. And if it looks at all right before you blur it, then you'll be good when you blur it. So right now, that's uh, it's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna hop back into Gaussian Blur, and I'm gonna go with uh, somewhere around, you know, 40 or 50 here, uh, maybe even in the 30s. And then I'll click OK. I'm actually gonna bump the opacity up just a smidge. And you'll notice it's kind of like a cold, it's like a gray tone. It doesn't look quite right. And the reason is if something's casting a shadow, if it's floating just above something, it's going to reflect its own color a little bit. Light's gonna bounce off of the object and uh, it's almost gonna form a reflection in the shadow, if that makes any sense. You'll notice it if you ever go to set up some studio lighting and take like a bright red Lego piece and put it on a, a white semi-gloss backdrop. You're going to see the red glow off of the red Lego piece mixed in with the shadow. They're gonna kind of mix together. So we got a problem because we have no hamburger bottom bun color mixing with our shadow. So what I'm gonna do is press Command, which would be Control on a PC, and the letter U to go into Hue and Saturation, and I'm gonna check the Colorize box, and I'm gonna crank Saturation way up, and you'll notice that nothing happens until I bump Lightness up, because when you're adding color to black, you really, you don't get anything at all. So we've gotta bump the Lightness up to see the color coming through. So now you can see that we have a pink color coming through, which is not what we want. We're gonna rotate the hue a little bit to get hamburger bun color. And then I'm gonna bring the lightness back down, turn it more into a shadow, and get somewhere in between where it starts to look right, where we have the influence of the color in the shadow, but it's not really a color and it's not really just black. We sort of end up with just a happy medium. And when we find that happy medium, we can click OK. We can rename this layer shadow instead of burger copy. 
And now we're ready to select both of our layers, right click and choose to export them as a PNG, which throws them in a folder for you. And then once you've done that, you can drag those assets from that folder into Adobe Muse. You'll probably wanna go put them where they belong. If you're building a real project, you wanna get your assets all nice and organized. But once you do that, you're good to go to drop them into Muse and you're free to position them and set your responsive behavior however you want. Uh, no rules there. Move for Muse is completely responsive compatible. You'll notice that in the example that's already completed, if I preview it in the browser, which takes a moment, um, it's gonna load up uh, full screen here, but if I make it smaller, you can see that the objects are responsive. If I refresh, you can see that the animation is the same, uh, only smaller, because it's all relative and it does not mess with the position of your objects. So that's really cool. Move from Muse is responsive compatible. That question comes up a bit and the answer is yes. So now we've got our two objects on the canvas. I've already dragged them in, they're already here. Nothing special there, I just dragged them in and spaced them out so that the shadow is under the burger. Essentially what I've done here is I've put the objects where they're going to end up. Not where they're starting, but where they're going to end up. And now we can add the animation, which is super easy. We've just got to go and find the move for Muse widgets. And then what I'm going to do is have these appear on page load. Uh, it comes with seven widgets. You could choose to uh, have these things appear on scroll instead of appearing on page lo uh, load. Appear on page load is really only gonna work if these objects are toward the top of the page, but if they're further down, you could do appear on scroll where you can have them show up once they scroll into view of the browser. So I'm gonna keep it simple, keep the tutorial short and sweet, and I'm gonna bring in the appear on page load. So it's asking me, what graphic style am I trying to animate here? See, you tell the animation widget what object you're trying to animate using something called a graphic style. So let's back up a step. I'm actually going to delete the widget, pretend that that never happened. So what we're gonna need to do first as setup is select the burger and give it a graphic style. We can name it whatever we want. You just want it to be all lowercase and no spaces to keep things simple. So I've already done this. I've already created a graphic style and named it burger. Um, I'm actually gonna delete my graphic styles here and uh, replace it with no particular graphic style. We're just gonna go back as if I never did this, just so we can do it together. So now I've got no graphic styles, and if you guys don't see the graphic styles panel, you can go to window and you'll find graphic styles and you can turn that on if it's not already on. And then you'll see this little window here, it'll be blank, and then you can start applying graphic styles. So I'm gonna select the burger, I'm gonna hit the new button at the bottom, which creates a style and it drives me nuts, but it doesn't apply the style, even though I selected an object first and then hit new. So we've gotta go and double click the style and then give it a name. Uh, I'm going to name it burger. And then I'm gonna select the shadow and do the same thing, create a new style. I'll double click it. And I'm going to name this not shadow because shadow is actually a word that's used for other things in the code that Muse creates. I'm going to name it burger shadow. Cause that's not confusing. I'll know what it means later when I find it. And I've got burger and I've got burger shadow. So now I'm ready to go in and target burger and target burger shadow for those animation effects. So let's drag in the widget. And this first one, I'm going to target the burger. And the animation style I'm going to do is fade in up. I want it to fade in, but I also want it to rise up. The burger's gonna rise up just a little bit. And I'm gonna do about a second and a half, and I don't need any delay. So I'm gonna set the delay to zero. It's going to occur over one and a half seconds with the duration here. The higher the duration, the slower it goes, because that means it's going to be doing the animation for longer. And then the delay, I don't want any delay. When the page loads, I want the burger to float in and we'll be good to go. But it, things are gonna be a little different on the shadow. So let's go and drag in another copy of this or you can option drag the widget itself if you want to because we're using the same type of widget twice. And then we'll go in and we will edit this to be burger shadow. And the animation style for this one is gonna be zoom in because I've got the shadow kind of expanding. It's growing to, to make it look like it's becoming more diffused as the burger floats up and away. But that's not a rule. I mean, you could just do fade in if you wanted the shadow to just simply fade in. The duration for this one, I'm going to make it a little bit quicker. I'm gonna make it one point, uh, we'll try 1.2. And then we're gonna add a little bit of a delay 
because I don't want it to start before the burger really appears at all, because at the very, very beginning of the burger transition, it's invisible. It's fading in still, and shouldn't really be quite casting a shadow yet. So we'll add a little bit of a delay. We'll just do 0.2 seconds, very, very subtle, and now we can preview this thing in the browser. So I'm gonna do Shift-Command-E, which would be Shift-Control-E on your keyboard, and we should have something good here. Yep, there it is. When I refresh it, it does its thing. So that's really all there is to it. Using Move for Muse on multiple objects, you can make things sort of appear to interact with one another, and it's really, really easy to implement. And just so you guys know, the appear on page load means that it's going to appear when the page is done loading, so that way you don't have assets that are animating before they're loaded, because that would just be a whole big mess. So the page does have to load first which means don't make your pages take forever to load, but you shouldn't be doing that in the first place. So this will kind of help you enforce that upon yourself. So that's really it. Um, go ahead and download Move for Muse if you don't have it already. And for those of you, again, who are watching in December of 2016, go to museresources.com and you will find that you can grab Move for Muse my internet's a little slow right now. There we go. You'll find that there is a 60% off, 65% off holiday bundle for a limited time. It is until the end of December. It's to get you guys ready to crush it in 2017. Uh, it includes the Icon Mega Pack. It includes Move for Muse, and it includes the Icon Mega Pack web font. Uh, all together, you can animate the icons. It, it, the whole bundle just really goes well together. And it's also every widget that's for sale on museresources.com because everything else is free. So you guys can get that whole bundle for 25 bucks. I recommend doing this if you're watching in December of 2016 because Move for Muse by itself is 20 bucks. So for five bucks more, you get the icon mega pack, you get the web font, and uh, it's a better deal than buying it all separately for 55 bucks. So go ahead and do that and try this out and hopefully you guys enjoy and I'll have more cool stuff coming soon.